I knew it was going to get better when we got to this damn reunion. I just knew it. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, The Reunion Part 1 for Season 4. Listen, I knew it was going to be, there was going to be some stuff. I just knew it because this is what Hollywood does. They, they be having some shit going on. Okay, so we start right off. Alexis is pregnant. She's pregnant. She says that the baby is by Fetty. Masika feels some kind of way. I don't know what that is. Alexis and, and Masika both are like a thorn in each other's side. They are just like arch nemesis. And it is so funny because Fetty's just like not really, I don't think he really gives a shit about either one of them. I really don't. And then Solo Lucci was feeling some type of way because he wants the baby to be his. Like, I mean, I'm sure if you decide to just give her a child support payment, I'm sure she'll take it. But I just, I don't get it. Well, you, again, I don't get him, period. Skeletor works my nerves. But anyway, um, I'm looking at Masika. Let, and as we're going through this, let's just talk about the fashions. And I ain't going to go through everybody, just the ones that stuck out, stuck out to me. Masika, I don't know what that outfit is about. We got this eyeshadow and then this, it just... She looks like like the nasty school teacher. Like the school teacher that would like fuck. You you know the kind of school teacher. I, I I didn't get that outfit. I was really shocked because she usually will come up with something interesting to put on. You know what I mean? I didn't get that. I didn't get that outfit at all. But whatever, Masika. She she been missing this whole season when it comes to outfits and stuff. Anyway, A1 where are you going, honey? Where are you going? He got pearls sewn to his lapels, pearls sewn on the pockets, just pearls. And you wonder why Brox calls you diamonds and pearls. Because I'm like, I don't know what that's all about. I, I just was kind of not living for that suit. His hair looked nice, I guess. His hair was real neat and stuff. And his glasses and stuff were kind of nice. But again, you know, I ain't for all this, all, all that going on. Lyrica, that is a damn mess. Lyrica looks like a character from Guardians of the Galaxy. That that whole, I don't like it. None of it. That pinkish wig and all. That is given complete super villain tease. I, I didn't care for that at all. Even the way that when she stands up, the slits are cut up so high that you could actually see. Mm -mm. That was just a bad look. Pretty girl. Very pretty girl. But I don't know what that look is that she was going for, but it is definitely Guardians of the Galaxy. Moniz, she's mad back to be on Thunderdome with cardboard slots put on the shoulders. I, I didn't get that. I, I, I didn't get... Nice gown, except for the dumb shit on the shoulders. If it was just... The shoulders were just regular, and it was just understated and just white, and it looked very good on her. It looks nice on her body and everything. But that shit on the sleeve, that Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome thing, I couldn't get with that. James and that Pee Wee Herman suit, I, I couldn't do the, the big top Pee Wee look either. Um, Safari, that red fur is bad. The child quit playing. Safari looked good, but he always do. You, you know, he's just real over the top. But... His suit is nice. It fits good. You know, he got all this is always right. And that red fur is everything. Everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Princess. 
the ice capades. <laughs> She's the, the brat for the ice capades. Ray, I told y'all that Ray, when we seen Ray, that a lot of that weight was going to be gone. And he's coming down real, real good. He's starting to look like Ray again. And I was like, all right, Ray, cool. No problem. And it and he's youth. It looks like his youth is coming back. I'm telling you that just that it's crazy how some people can wear weight and some people just can't. You know, it's not a big deal, but there are some people that just cannot wear weight. Um, and speaking of weight, we're going to jump. I'm just going to jump into this a little bit, and then I'll talk about it later. But there was a period in there where Zale was making a lot of fat jokes. And did y'all catch? Nina was not feeling that shit at all. That shit got right up underneath her crawl. And she was like, so she's like, I'm seeing a lot of the castmates laughing and keying. And I don't understand what's so funny. I was like, so y'all about to piss off Nina and you, you piss her off. It ain't going to go good because she's got the middle seat. And, um, she could make or break what your experience is at the reunion. She could make it so you don't get to say shit. So I was like, y'all better take heed and pay attention. She had on a real pretty, um, real pretty royal blue um, jumpsuit that looked, it looked real nice on her. And her hair was nice makeup. She looked really good this, this, at this time because sometimes Nina's a little hit and miss. You know, and it ain't, she's always very neat and put together, but it's just sometimes personal style wise. Um, me and her kind of miss each other, but she was every, I liked it today. I liked what she had going on. It was real cool. And yeah, she was definitely representing for the big girl. She's over there. Bitch was looking good and she didn't appreciate them fat jokes. I was like, okay. Anyway, so we'll go back to that, the Zell and situation later, but let's jump back. Hazel and Moniece had a run in right away. They had a run in. Um, Monice then jumped off. I thought the old Monice showed up. She's like, ooh, I can't stand her. And then she went into the whole crazy bit with the, ah, and hollered and all that, all that real crazy shit. I said, mm. And then Fizz, was you a little butt hurt, Fizz? Because he had a little, uh, confessional time where he said, you know, I, I don't want to be in her stuff. And if she's hollering and stuff, at least she got AD here. And AD could, um, you know, jump up and get her and stuff. Are you, you feeling some kind of way, Fizz? Feel some kind of way? I think he is so corny. So corny. So corny. And when they brought up the little stuff about the B2K stuff, did you really just sit there and call yourself Re and Omarion? All that Omarion shade that you threw? Shady. It wasn't cute. It didn't look cute. You looked very stupid and you looked very, very jealous. Talking about Omarion. He think he all that and he think he can reach B2K. Uh, fame and he can't he may not be able to reach b2k fame but he definitely can sell more singles than you so i i don't you know you read and he can make enough money to make a living off of and you are making bubble gum money so just shut your mouth because you make yourself look foolish absolutely foolish you're lost you know, you lost your woman to a woman, and then you, your career done went down the toilet, and you, and you mad at everybody else. Sit down. Sit down. What you need to be doing, you just run around chasing Jay Bull, trying to get him to get into a group so you could try to pick up some checks. What you need to be doing is trying to see if he can put a word in with HR and get you a job down there at the phone company answering some of them calls. That's what you need to do. Anyway, moving on. So... After we had the little thing with Moniz and uh, Hazel, we bring Moniz back, and then they're going to address the situation with A.D. and Tiffany, and Moniz and, and Tiffany looked really pretty. She really did. She looked really pretty um, at the reunion. She looked real nice. I was like, check her out. And it just further went into why I don't care for A.D., Tiffany said very plainly that A.D., you know, I don't like Moniz because, and I tell y'all this all the time, do not go to your family and your friends venting about your lover unless you are done with them and you know you're done because this is where this type of stuff comes from. A.D. was venting to Tiffany about things about Moniz and Moniz 
and and Tiffany, it just was a, a complete disconnect. Tiffany ended up not liking Moniz, but AD wasn't done with Moniz. Now, where I said, you know, and and it's, I don't even know no nicer way to say it. AD is a fuck boy. That's what she is. She literally sat there and tried to drag Tiffany in front of these people. Now, with friends like that, you really don't need no enemies. First of all, you're on here. Y'all are, are putting out this story. She's saying, no, I don't have feelings for, for AD. Well, we know better. We know better. But if she's your good friend, you know that. That could be a very embarrassing situation. So you would just, you know, redirect that conversation and cut that off so that wouldn't be on your friend, making your friend look stupid. No, you further perpetuated it and you was living in that. She sat there and lived in it with her dumb haircut. And then had the nerve, then she went over and said something about she wouldn't mess with her basic tomorrow. You got five men tattooed all on you and all that. You really gonna try to clown her like that? You really put her out there like that? Then tried to say that Tiffany was doing these things to try to be on season five. So you really threw your so-called best friend under the bus like that. Baby, that Tiffany told her, you wait, when I see you in LA, I'm going to see you, bitch. I'm going to see you. And I believe she's going to. I'm, I'm going to be waiting and watching to see Twitter and stuff. Because I believe in my soul. Tiffany's going to beat the shit out of A.D. You know how the girls get down, honey? She'll catch her at one of them little lesbian bars, honey, and get her and twirl her all over that bar. I wish I could be a fly on the wall to see it, honey. She's going to get her, honey. She's going to get her. And she deserves to be got. I didn't like that at all. I told y'all, that A.D., I don't care if we never see her again. I ain't, I ain't feeling her. She ain't my kind, of, my kind of dude, honey. Old dumbass haircut bitch. Anyway, moving on. Um, Keisha. Now, on the last episode, they gave you a good ponytail. Why don't you just keep it? Why don't you keep it? You come up on here on this damn reunion looking like an extra from Hairspray. I said, I don't even, the, the whole thing with her and BB talking, I was kind of over that whole thing. I, I just was like, I guess there, maybe we'll tap back into them again because that didn't mean anything. It didn't hold any weight for me at all. But that hairdo, horrible. That outfit, I said, it's a fuzzy slip. She literally looked like she was getting ready to do the uh, on stage version of Hairspray. I was not using that at all. Um, James and that Bridget thing, them two just kind of threw each other under the bus. They did. They threw each other under the bus. Bridget is completely butthurt. Bridget is completely jealous of Brooke. Bridget is running around still feeling some kind of way because we all got to watch as you play second fiddle to Brooke. It was what it was. It is what it is. You're not, you can say what you want, but you don't have anything on Brooke. I mean, you're a good singer. So is Brooke. Brooke is real, real cute. You're just kind of cute. But Brooks were real, real cute. Um, and Booby likes Brooke. Period. At the end of the day, he may screw you. He may turn you upside down 52 times and let you bob on his knob, honey. But he likes Brooke better than he likes you. And, and you know it. And that's why you're mad, honey. Marcus, same thing. I think you were making a play for Marcus. I think you, and I, I they didn't say it, but I would bet money that her and Marcus have had before. And, um, you know, because her and Marcus got that same little electricity the same way that Booby and Brooke has, but it ain't as strong because Marcus, again, Marcus likes Brooke more than he likes you, and you know it, and you're feeling some kind of bridges to trash down. You, The best thing you had going was dumbass James, and he ain't, Pee Wee Herman ain't fooling with you either. So, girl, go sit down. Try try this again. Maybe they'll let you come back next season. There'll be some new people for you to suck on and lay on and fuck on. Get on out of here, girl. Um, so let's get to the last piece. So Nina's trying to get at some feeling about why there was all the issue with Zell and Mr. Ray. Um, and not just him, just Zell and everybody. Like Zell and Masika and how he ended up 
It was terrible. I mean, it, it all broke down to why they weren't friends anymore and all of that and why him and Mr. Ray, it all came, had to do with Zell is a shady queen, period. There's no other way to say it. There's no other way to chalk it up. Zell is a shady queen. He's this way this day. He's that way the next day. That's just who he is. And he'll climb anybody's back to get ahead. I wouldn't fool with Zell for all the tea in China. You understand me? That's just who he is. And everything's a joke to him. And nothing is serious, including that shit he had on. It just was what it was. So once they thought they got some common ground and they says, well, you know, can y'all... He said, I don't really have no problem with Mr. Ray. He fat. You know, it is what it is. I ain't got a problem. He said, okay, well, y'all gonna go ahead and make up. And he goes over there like he gonna hug him. The best move in love and hip hop history. He went over there, baby, and took and hauled off and cold cocked Mr. Ray. We didn't get to see it, but we did see like some of the aftermath. And he's like, I'm bleeding. And they're gonna show more of that next week. But there was blood. I don't know where the blood was coming from. But from what I can see, it looked like Zell took his ass over there and knocked the shit out of Mr. Ray. Girl, you already know she messy. You should have been ready. <laughs> you should have been ready. You ain't had nowhere to run to this time. And he know whacked the shit out of you. That damn Zell is too much. A mess. Anyway, but that's it. That's all that they basically did. This uh, this um part of it. They always deliver because they messy as hell. They're young and they messy. That's what they do. They're fun. That's what they do. This is their type of shit. So I'll catch y'all next week with the conclusion. All right, guys. Later.